All of the kids that want to come down to the front, we're going to ask the birthday boy to scoot down a little bit. <laughs> Get your water bottle there. It's probably got run all over it. Do you know what this is? What is it? It's a box. <laughs> yes. There you go. All right. Do you know what kind of box it is? Christmas box. Come on, Addison. Shoe box. It's a shoe box. We call them shoe boxes, but uh, you know when this uh, started out, I guess it was Samaritan's Purse. That we we used shoe boxes. And then we started, they started making boxes because we found out that if we were going to really do this right, we need to have a very strong, good box. So we might not have enough shoe boxes. And of course we didn't. But do uh, you know where this, the, these have been packed? And I want to thank uh, Andy Crow for keeping us on track and getting us all caught up after the big pandemic. Thanks to all of you for all the things you purchased that are in here. There's a New Testament in each box as well, which came from the uh, church fund. And uh, also Chandra and Henry and Linda. Does anybody else work on these? It was mostly mom and dad. All right, mostly Henry and Linda Crow that have packed these. We, it was probably a good idea. So this has crow germs on it, but doesn't have everybody's germs on it, okay? And uh, Henry and Linda Crow were probably the most germ-free people I know. So they're, unlike me and Terry, which you probably should not get too close to. But this is packed, it's taped up, it's marked, it's ready to go. Do you remember the country that we sent it to? Don't tell Uncle Danny. <laughs> Did you hear that? That's where? Honduras. Honduras, that's in South, that's in Central America, actually. So there are a couple of them up here just for display. They're all packed and ready to go. We're going to have a special guest next Sunday. Bucket Guthrie's going to be with us. He always makes me tired. <laughs> to be quite honest, you know, uh, Larry had a few health problems a couple of years ago. And he, he may still be have, uh, struggling with challenges. I don't see him every day. But uh, he came to see me when I was in the hospital after I had my heart attack. And I knew that he had just come out of the hospital himself. But he's very excited. I don't know if he's been to Honduras already this year or how many times he went last year or uh, what his plans are for this year. But he's going to be with us next Sunday. So be sure to come and uh, meet Larry. Don't hug him around the neck. Don't shake his hand. Don't get close to him. Just wave at him. But he's going to be excited as he always is. He's going to give a very inspiring message. He's going to encourage us. He's already, always very effusive as I wish to be about your sacrifice. Also, the church also provides the postage and it's very expensive to send a box like this to Central America. But thank the Lord that he's blessed us and he's given us, he's blessed us so that we can do something like that. Uh, this is a, a, a special pack of cards. It's really for a better uh, magician than I am. These are called fireflies, fireflies. And it's a decorative pack, and it's really for flourishes. A flourish is when you're doing a magic trick, and it's really more about how it looks than anything. See how pretty that is? And that's the joker. You can see that. So when you're doing a, a trick with a firefly, uh, it, it's supposed to add a little bit to it, but it's not just an ordinary card. Uh, it, is a, it is a card that... Uh, Is decorative, so they're fireflies. I remember a number of years ago when I was a pastor at a church, uh, long, long ago and far, far away. And I was in my a sermon or a message that I was uh, presenting. I was talking about us catching fireflies when we were kids. We'd give us a jar. We really didn't have a lot of disposable things back then. Probably just a mason jar with a bell jar lid on it, something like that. And we would go out and catch fireflies. 
And I was telling this story kind of going along, and I'd been talking like that for about four or five minutes. And finally, one of my very good friends there who was a member of the church, he said, oh, lightning bugs. Yeah. Lightning bugs. Yeah, lightning bugs, fireflies. So let me show you this. If you, uh, if you fan these, you see how that looks? That's how pretty that is. And then turn them over. And if you could do lots of different kinds of fans. And if I was very expert, make them fly from one hand to the other. Things like that. They're liable to wind up with liable to be a 52 dollar <laughs> kickup. You can see that there's a, a jack of spades, a four of diamonds. Come up here, Addison, help me just a little bit. Now, we, we share cooties all the time, so I, that's why I'm not going to have my mask on. You have a mask, though, don't you? And uh, they both wore masks all week to school. So when they're with family, and we, we had uh, dinner together, supper together the night, I brought in some rolls, and there was Avery, and she was taking rolls and dipping them right in the butter and just eating the butter just like it was candy. <laughs> As I kind of shuffle and cut through these, what I'd like to do is I, I want you to select one of these cards, okay? I'm going to run my thumb down the side just like that, riffle through the cards, and I want you to tell me whenever to, you want me to, to stop. Okay, just say stop out loud. Stop right there. I'm going to give you that card, and, and I want you to take it over there to where Avery's at. Show it to her. And y'all both look at it and determine what card it is. Now, you should know the name of that card. There are four suits, diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades. Then there are two, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then jack, queen, king, and the jokers. So that might have a number on it. And it might have a heart or a diamond or a spade or a club. So do y'all both know what that card is? I've made a prediction. There's a card on the desktop there, Carter. Would you find that that it's just a card, it's a picture of a card on there? Why don't you put it up on the screen and see if I predicted correctly? Is that your card? Tree of Hearts. Is it a tree of hearts? <laughs> Avery's saying no. Tree of hearts? She nods reluctantly. That is the tree of hearts right there. It comes right after the two of hearts. Right before the four of hearts is the tree of hearts. You know, sometimes we misunderstand each other. And sometimes people say things just to mess with you. And just to try to confuse you, there's all different kinds of things that are said and have lots of things to hear. You stopped me. You could have stopped me on any one of 54 cards, but you stopped me on the three of hearts, and Carter did the other magic. It's really not the three of hearts, but that's close. But you know, the, the message that we have about Jesus is more than just close. It's spot on. You know, that's what these are called. They're either called pips, the hearts there, there's hearts there, 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 and there. They're called pips are spots by magicians and card players and such. The gospel message, the story of Jesus is not just close, it's spot on. And we need to communicate it very clearly, very plainly in the way that we live and in the words that we say so that we're never confused. We don't want to confuse other people or to cause them consternation or to make them wonder what, to confuse them or to have them misunderstand us. Because if they see us, if they hear us saying the message of Jesus, but we don't live like a Christian, that will create a misunderstanding. Thank you for helping me, Addison. And uh, remember to be very plain in the way you live your life. It's very important for people to understand us. Only God, however, can open a heart. So let's pray that he does that, all right? Thank you both for your help. You can go back and sit with your mom. Dave, if you would come and...